We've all heard why humidity is very important to maintain in your guitar's case and your guitar's environment, but let's, let's talk a little bit about why that is so. Now that we're in this uh, workshop of mine, I can tell you that I keep this workshop at very constant humidity. In North America, most luthiers will maintain their workshop between 40 and 50 percent relative humidity. And so all the woods when we build our guitars are kept at that, that um, humidity. And the reason why we choose that range is because when guitars go out to say North America or even in other climates, um, 40 to 50 percent is about in the mid-range of what they'll experience in different atmospheres around um, where the players are playing. Now, the most dangerous situation is to have a guitar in a, a humidity that is less than what they were built. So the benchmark is where they're built, but the care needs to be taken when they are either higher or lower than this uh, humidity of this workshop. So that's why we have products like these different humidifiers to keep in your guitar uh, in your, with your case when you're not playing. Now certainly you'll be out playing and outside of, of the case you can't directly humidify unless you're playing in a humidified room, but that's not practical. So it's okay when they're outside, but when you're storing your guitar in the case, you really need products that will keep the humidity level up. Now it's fine to have higher than uh, the humidity that the guitars were built because that's generally not dangerous unless you go to really high humidity levels like 80% and above. But for most of us it's the low humidity during the winter times when air conditioning is going on and the, the air just tends to get really dry. And most of us don't live in tropical climates where it's really high humidity. So. There's a few very, very nice products these days that are on the market. One that I use is a Diderio Planet Waves product, and it's kind of a do-nothing product because um, this bag hangs into your sound hole, and within these protective bags are these uh, packs that have moisture and gel. And the beauty of this system is that when they're placed inside this bag, um, they can both uh, take hum uh, moisture if the humidity level is higher than 50%, or but they can also give moisture if the humidity in your case is lower than, say, 40%. So all you have to do is simply buy these refills and stick it into the bag and stick it into your case, and you don't have to fill with any kind of water, any kind of liquid. So these are nice. And um, another one that I have liked uh, a lot and have used a lot is one by Oasis, and it is simply a, a semi-permeable membrane, and you do have to attend this one. And the way that it works is you just put distilled water into this tube that has a kind of gel that retains the moisture. And maybe in the wintertime when it's really dry, then you'll be filling with distilled water and maintaining that. And this also goes into the sound hole. So uh, once you have the humidity going with these products, then you need to have a good case that can actually seal this uh, level of moisture within. You might have these products in there, but unless your case is sealed, then whatever moisture you've added will simply go out into the large atmosphere. And it can do that very quickly because moisture tends to leave wood faster than it does um, taking on moisture. So I'm going to show you one type of case, but uh, this is a BAM case. I'm going to come around and show you the type of feature in a case, whichever case you select, you want to have a case that has a valence that is rubber or a type of plastic that on one side, it's a female uh, side that has a, a U-type channel, and then on the other half of the case has the male end so that when you close it, it makes a moisture-tight seal. And so when you hang your humidifier in and you close your case, 
everything is now moisturized properly. The other thing that you can do in your case, and there are some nice products nowadays too, is you want to have uh, a digital hygrometer. That's something that measures relative humidity, and I keep one in my shop as well as in my cases. There's also one by D'Addario these days that uh, for about $50, you can keep this clip to your inside your case. And it will read by Bluetooth, uh, it'll send the relative humidity to your phone if you're within uh, um, maybe five feet or so of your case. So you don't even have to open up your case nowadays to know what the relative humidity inside is. As just a general warning about what can happen when you don't properly humidify, um, there's a lot of problems that can happen. Certainly you can, have, you can appreciate that if I'm building guitars at between 40 and 50 percent relative humidity, outside those, um, that, that level, then the wood is going to move. And if you have different species of wood, they might move at different rates, different expansion and contraction. Well, the most dangerous situation is when you are at lower than uh, the humidity that they were built at and, and the wood starts to dry out. So some of the symptoms of drying out before you start to get cracks would be on your guitar's fingerboard. If you run your finger, especially when you're doing shifts along the neck, you'll feel the fret ends sticking out. Well, it's not really the fret ends that are sticking out. What's happening is your fingerboard, whether it's ebony or a type of rosewood, is actually contracting because it's lost moisture. Well, that is fixable, and you can take a problem like that to a luthier, and the luthier will take some kind of sanding block or a file and actually run that along the edges of the fret ends to shorten them and get them flush against um, the wood. So if you have that problem, you should definitely get that checked out by your local repair person. Even worse, though, is for the soundboard, which is very delicate, and as they lose moisture, they, the wood starts to contract. So some of the signs that you'll see is a, a soundboard that's starting to sink and maybe associated with that is that the strings will start to go down as the bridge starts to sink and your action will start to get lower. You might start to notice some buzzing along the frets. That would be one symptom. Far worse would be cracking because as the wood starts to contract, it will pull away uh, the, the weaker grain lines and you commonly see cracks that will develop somewhere along the wings or below the bridge in areas that are, are the weakest. Another type of crack that you'll see as the fingerboard starts to shrink under low moisture is if your fingerboard was glued directly to the soundboard it will pull inward and then crack your soundboard along the edges of where the fingerboard was glued. So those are the type of things that you have to look for. Hopefully with proper humidification, you won't see that problem. I should also mention that even if you don't detect problems or see cracks, um, there's always the possibility that in a very dry guitar, they're just simply weaker. So even though you might be traveling with a guitar in your case, a slight bump might just be enough to tip that balancing point and actually cause a crack. And so during the winter time, luthiers are always inundated with <laughs> requests for fixing cracks. But I hope that won't happen to you if you have a decent case, a proper measuring device, and uh, the proper humidification system. Mm -hmm.